आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा A flowering half-open lotus translated into a house of worship a masterpiece of contemporary technology Located on a hill in Bahapur Kalkaji New Delhi The lotus blossom with a diameter of 75 meters and height of 35 meters has 3 rows of petals of 9 petals each Aesthetically designed 9 pools surrounding the flower represent the green leaves of the plant completing the picture of the majestic lotus afloat in shimmering waters dressed in their colorful best men women and children streamed in from all parts of the world for the formal dedication ceremony of the bahai house of worship on december 24th the temple has been designated as the mother temple of the indian subcontinent the seventh in the chain of bahai shrines the temple like its worshipers revolves around the concept of oneness oneness of god of religion and of mankind the bahai faith was founded in iran by bahaula meaning the glory of god Universal House of Justice I have the great honor of dedicating this mother temple of the Indian subcontinent to public worship Now this glorious marble lotus this exquisite symbol of purity beauty perfection and mercy that comes to all men from their creator enfolds us tenderly in her breast bidding us unite in peace welcoming within her doors people of all creeds all races all nations and all classes mr faber's sahaba responsible for executing his dream into an architectural wonder why the lotus design lotus is really that uh, you can say uh, that unique symbol hindus they believe that lotus was uh, lotus was the place of birth of brahma the creator brahma was born in a lotus flower which grows from the navel of lord vishnu and uh, Uh, Buddhists they believe that uh, they, they look to uh, lotus as symbol of purity, symbol of uh, uh, 
manifestation of God. Lord Buddha says that you have to be like a lotus which grows in a mud and it remains pure and clean above it. Uh, that's why always we see all the uh, deities and uh, uh, prophets and uh, in, the, in these in both Hinduism and, and Buddhism sitting or dancing on a lotus flower. It's um, uh, somehow uh, crystallized, it's uh, somehow uh, symbolizing the manifestation of God himself. Manifestation of God comes to this world from, he is not earthy, he is not from this earth, he is above it. Now, um, uh, I had uh, very much in mind that whatever we are using or whatever we are doing, the technology that we are using should be Indian. And the uh, temple is, because we, are, we cannot, uh, I mean, it should be something that we can only build it in India and not in any other place, both architecturally and structurally. And I think to great extent we have achieved this because uh, actually um, I should, I have said uh, always that it was, it's true that construction of this building was really difficult to, in India, but I can easily say that it was not possible anywhere else also. Because uh, when we, uh, uh, we have gone through all the aspects of uh, the technical aspects and possibilities of the, I mean, uh, uh, technical uh, capabilities in, in India, what is possible, how to use it. And then we have uh, put, we have altered the design completely in a way that it suits Indian uh, conditions, Indian uh, uh, architectural requirements and as well as technical requirements. The pools provide a natural air conditioning system. The cool air from the pools is sucked into the openings in the basement of the building and warm air expelled from the top of the dome. The interior toroidal dome comprises 54 ribs with shells in between. A unique place of worship where there are no idols, no photographs, no priests and no pundits. Only rows of white marble benches resembling sea waves where one can pray and meditate in peace. The outermost set of nine petals called the entrance leaves open outward and form the nine entrances all round the outer annular hall. Since the lotus is open at the top, a glass and steel roof provides natural lighting and protection from rain. Uh, we have uh, you can uh, say f five rows of nine petals each, uh, which uh, they, uh, three of them are visible externally. They make the main building. They are cladded with marble from outside. They are white concrete too. Uh, we have white cement, white sand, white aggregate through the building. And it's just an, an uh, co uh, exposed concrete. There's no other paint or decorative elements. Then we have two more rows of, uh, of the petals inside. Uh, these two rows, they, they, sh they make a sort of bud of the lotus, they, they close the leaves of the lotus, and uh, they are really in a skylight. Light comes through these shells, from in between the, the shells, light comes through, and uh, uh, you don't see the source of light, but just you see different valor, different uh, uh, reflection of, of light uh, inside. Uh, we were very particular to have shells uh, very thin and elegant and uh, in a way uh, they should be they should be as elegant as leaves of the flower itself. We didn't want to have some concrete uh, you can say flower that that it should have not given that impression. Now some of our shells are only two inches thick some of them are four some of them are eight and uh, uh, throughout, they are one piece. One shell is concreted one piece. This is a very unique method that has been developed here. We have done it for the first time. I am not, at least I am not aware of 
any building uh, anywhere else which has been concreted in this way. Uh, we developed a system which was totally uh, Indian, unique here with the help of our uh, contractors, engineers, and our uh, other our consultant engineers. Uh, we have um, had uh, a very wonderful teamwork of consultants and our contractor all together. This building was not possible to be built with one or two people or with contractor or with consultants. It should have been built with teamwork, all everybody to put their minds together and think how we can do it in India. Because it was very important for me that we built this building in absolutely Indian way, in a way that people from abroad, when they come, they say that um, uh, really this was not possible in, in those countries. And this building is, in my opinion, it's a really handicraft. Everybody has put something from himself in it. We have had 800 laborers, engineers, technicians, supervisors, foremen, that they have put, all of them, they have been able to contribute something from themselves because all the things are done by hand. 400 carpenters have worked here to create these shells, double curvature and all of these things. And then to fix these pieces of marble that they are, uh, they are, in the uh, pattern of the, you can say, veins on the leaves of the, of the petals. Uh, uh, the say, just uh, if you look to one of the petals of the flower, you see that there are veins that they come to the bottom. So the same pattern, we wanted to have it on marble. As a result, each piece of marble becomes, uh, of, of, uh, of shells, becomes a different size, different exact dimension. These sizes of pieces of marble have been calculated one by one. It has been cut and carved to that size. It has come to sight, and it has been fixed to the building like small pieces of jigsaw puzzle. The carpenters were guided by the engineers and our, uh, our team of consultants and contractors together. They were trained to fix first to fix pieces of timber in place of marble. Same uh, pattern was made with timber. They fixed some timber, and then when they used to it, the uh, timber was removed and marble was fixed. And that's why you see this much accuracy in the shells. If you look to the corners and edges of the leaves, you can see that they are absolutely accurate. We have been very quality conscious, I should say. Really, uh, uh, tolerances have been taken care to minimum. The petals are clad with white marble from the mines of Greece, but cut in Italy specially graded dolomite aggregates from Alvar mines and white silica sand from Jaipur have been used for the petals. It took the designers two years to formally visualize the concept of lotus into practical building shapes of spears, cylinders, toroids and cones and six years to construct it. Beautiful walkways and stairs of the red podium are in red sandstone. Spread over 27 acres of land, the temple complex has sprawling green lawns all around, adding to its rich looks. complexity and expertise of the task also lies in making the structure both durable and maintenance free. As the sun sets in, the golden rays, red skies and white marble join hands to dazzle the spectator. Illuminated, the temple presents a sight so breathtaking, so out of this world, that one can only regale and rejoice in its magnetic and spiritual attraction.